Hey everyone, it's Finola Howard and today's Wednesday and today it's Ask Finola How, episode 57! Woohoo! <laughs> so, yes, I'm clearly very excited. Anyway, so today we're talking about planning because it's a kind of theme at the moment and we did a little bit the last time as well about planning but I'm kind of responding to a couple of questions which is This question's a great question. They're always great questions. But anyway, this question from a real entrepreneur is, why do business plans never seem to be actioned? And what can I do to make sure I stick to my plans in 2023? So I see this so much (laughs) that people spend, and first of all, there's such a reticence about uh, planning and business planning. And I think this actually gets to the root of the matter people are reticent about business plans if they don't have a history of actually making them real, if they don't action them. Whereas people who do action their plans love the planning because it's so exciting to uh, manifest what you have articulated in writing and said, this is what I want, this is how I'm going to get it, and now I do it. And I check myself at each point. Like I think that's, it's such a powerful thing. And yes, there's times when we go off track and sometimes that going off track is a learning exercise and figuring out stuff and trying things out. But you've always got to return to the action to the end game. So let me just share with you some of the things that I've experienced over the years with people. So the common reasons that people don't build or write plans that are actionable are as follows, okay? One of the most common things that I see all the time is trying to do too much in too short too short a space of time. So for example, it can even happen when you're new to business or it can happen when you're anxious about business that you're wanting to get to a certain end point and you want to get to it now and therefore you're not being realistic about what can be achieved in a space of time. And someone said this to me very, very many years ago, early on in my career and They said, Finola, invariably, everything takes twice as long and costs twice as much to get to where you want to go. So as you, the more that you plan, the closer to reality you will be in terms of time and budget. And that's where you really need to engage with your plan and to embrace the plan. So I've I've heard situations where someone has been trying to maybe write a course, build out a course, get the website done, get rebranding done and get it launched to a non-existent customer base all in three to six months. That's not, in three months, that's not really possible to kind of craft something, a very specific product, and get it to a market that doesn't know you exist yet. You've got to start to be really reasonable. And it's, it's a factor, I think it's connected to this idea that entrepreneurs really want to get everything done now, whereas in actual fact, the best thing you can do is break it down to its smallest component parts and give each one the time that it needs to get done so that you can get your product built and sold to a customer that is just waiting to buy and building uh, an audience that's just wanting to buy what you've got for them. It takes time. So slow down a little. When you slow down a little on this in your planning, you actually speed up because it just repeats again and again and again. And I've seen it so many times where people are trying to get to an end game too fast and they're missing the steps in the process. So you've got to break it down. okay? and yeah, and also just another note I had for myself there was those kind of plans are often filled with shoulds. I should do this or I should do that or. Other people have this in their plan and I think I should have this. The minute you move into should territory, walk away because it won't resonate with you. You won't believe in it. If you don't believe in it, you're not going to do it. So break it down. Be realistic about how long each step in this puzzle takes to make real and bring them together, which leads me to my second point. Fragmented plans never get actioned. Okay, this is when... Again, it's kind of in the land of should as well of I should have a lead magnet, should have a website, should have a, should have a, should have a. But it's very often I see in business when they're 
putting the planning together and even putting the strategy together. They're taking a box to get a lead magnet done, you know, because they think the minute they have it done, then then automatically people are going to want it simply because they've given it away for free. But no, this is the way you need to think about all of the process, which is you need to think about you basically you start with the customer and their journey to find an answer to their pain point. And you need to start there and you go, OK, which customer? What's their pain point? What's their product? What's your product that solves their pain point? More than that. What's your lead magnet that solves their pain point? What's your content that solves their pain point? Everything has to connect back to a customer type or avatar, whatever you want to call it. I call them customer categories. Everything you do needs to tie back to that customer with that pain point. Otherwise, nothing connects and you can't get momentum. More than that, you're not acknowledging. If you don't connect all of these steps in the process, then you're never filling your funnel, right? And just a reminder, because we talked about funnel before. Funnel is about realizing that we don't see something and just buy it, okay? Sometimes we will if it's a really small offer, right? But generally, and I've said this before, generally it takes 42 days, you know, like three months in your ecosystem for someone to buy a minimum, for someone to buy something significant from you, okay? When we have this in mind, we then know that we have to, you know, woo them a little. We have to pull them through the funnel. We have to show them that we are the right person for their answer that will solve that problem for them. So in your plan needs to take account of that and needs to connect all of the dots here. Very, very often the, the attention, because as again, entrepreneurs like to do things and get things done, they get things done that don't, that are like an end game in themselves. But the reality is they're not. The reality is you need to take each of those individual end games and make sure that they feed into the overall picture so that this is not a lead magnet that you want to give. Like sometimes I'll hear people say, oh, I'll just do a talk or I'll just do a checklist or I'll do a meditation. But if that meditation or whatever it is, and, and, and I don't mean to be disrespectful about that, but if that individual piece doesn't connect to the bigger picture and solve their pain point, they're not going to download it. <laughs> they are not giving you, they are there. Either. They are not going to give you their email address in exchange for something that does not have value, that does not connect to their pain point and solves it for them. So, your plan needs to match the journey of your customer. It needs to factor in, these are all of the steps that take them through to conversion so that I have constant flow of business moving through my, constant flow of cash moving through my business. And then you build processes in around it. But your plan must take that into account. Very, very often things like social media strategy, content strategy is often listed in a plan as a line item of, well, I'll just do social media to get people to me. But this is your opening gambit to your audience. So it can't be a line item. It's got to make sense. It's got to connect fundamentally to solving their problem. So does your product or service solve their pain point? Does your lead magnet, magnet solve their pain point? Does your content solve that pain point? And does every path on your website and in your social media guide them to that solution at whatever stage that person has? So you are connecting the dots throughout your entire plan all the time and giving it more attention than one line of saying, do social media. It's too powerful for you to just write it off in very simply. You have to think about what engages, what interacts, what grows your email list and measure all of that. Measure all of those things so you know what you're winning on. And then when there seems to be you're winning, winning, winning at each stage in this process, but then there is, you know, a direct fall, fall off because 
you lost them somewhere along the journey, then you need to factor that in too, okay? Because that shows you what you need to fix. You know, in your planning, we need to know what's not working so we can fix it and we've got to break it down, okay? The other thing about staying on this idea of social media and stuff like that is if you don't pay attention here, it has a tendency be, to become a mindless hamster wheel. If you don't, it becomes that kind of entity. And I hear it a lot of how do I feed that animal? How do I get all that done? And I talk a lot about this in terms of it's got to flow, it's got to be easy to achieve, but it also has to connect to the end point. It also has to make sense. And if it doesn't make sense, then just stop doing it. I'm being very glib about that. But you've got to find a way that in every touch point that you have, that it connects to a plan that connects to an end point, which brings me to my next point, which is not articulating the end point. Very common. If you don't articulate what you want to achieve in this next calendar year, in this next five years, but let's say your plan for 2023, be very clear what you want to achieve and work backwards. That's really it. You want to get a certain level of sales, certain number of customers, certain, you know, certain things developed, whatever those things are that will move your business in line with your overall plan. 2023 is going to work for you if you figure out, if you clearly articulate the end point and that you believe the end point. You have to believe it. If you don't believe it, you don't believe it's possible, then that plan won't be actioned. You have to believe it, which means you have to write it. Not somebody else, not a should thing. It's a plan that you say what's possible to achieve by the end of this year. Will that take me where I want to go? And what are the actions that will move the needle to make damn sure that I make that happen? Okay. The other one is focusing on the wrong things. You know, some stuff just doesn't matter. You have... Uh, a certain amount of time in a calendar year, a certain amount of resources, you know, mapping out a calendar a year ahead in terms of key points along that journey is going to make such a big difference. It's to make sure that you spend the energy in the right spaces that generate results and generate moving that needle, not that hamster wheel. So make sure you do it. Don't focus on the wrong things. Focus on the things that make a difference. Not the things that just seem to be, you know, just keeping going, keeping going all the time, but never actually achieving anything. And then the last thing, very, very common, is not resourcing your plan. Saying, I'm going to do this, 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 and this, but never fully resourcing it. You have, everyone has a limited time and money budget. So when you're mapping your plan, you need to make sure that you have fully resourced every step along that path or else you move it to a later quarter or you move it to a later year and you do it then because we want it to be capable of being achieved. That's ultimately what we want to happen. I hope that helped, but I know something that will help you even more. And that is I'm doing a free annual planning session on Monday at one o'clock and you can, it's called how to plan your success for 2023. Very simple, 90 minutes, it's a get it done style workshop because that's how I like to work. It's get it done in the session. You'll have an overall, you know, you'll have a good draft in place. It's filled with insights about what will move the needle, what levers are, what are the things that push you to the next level, quarter by quarter. So then that when you actually get to 2023, you can break that down. It's what am I doing today, this month, whatever. I'd love you to join me. Click on the link in the bio if you'd like to know more. Have a wonderful day. This has been Ask Fanola How, and this has been episode 57. Have a great day.